Big news, Fozzy Audio has just released their updated version of the original BT-20A amplifier with the new BT-20A Pro. In this video, we're going to compare both and see if it's worth you upgrading or if you're trying to decide between the two, which one is right for you. Let's jump into it next. Now, the first major difference is gonna really excite all of you that are interested in more power. The BT-20A was originally at 100 watts per channel into 4 ohms and 50 watts per channel into 8 ohms, while the new Pro version is rated at 300 watts per channel into 4 ohms and 150 watts into 8 ohms. It's been a minute since I've had to do math, but that's, that's three times the power. Now with all that upgrade and power on the Pro version, that means you're gonna get an upgraded power supply. The BT-20A Pro power supply is now rated 32 volts over five amps, while the original BT-20A's power supply was just 24 volts over 4.5 amps. I was gonna try to make a Spider-Man joke about with great power comes great responsibility or a great power supply, but I just couldn't figure out how to make it work, so let's forget I even tried. Now here's a really interesting upgrade with the Pro model. Fozzy Audio actually upgraded the amp chip. The original chip was the Texas Instruments TPA3116, while the new Pro model uses the TPA3255 chip. So whenever a product uses the word Pro and changes their amp chip, that means we got to spend some time listening to both and comparing and see if there's any sound differences. Now I actually did that in two different ways for this video. The first being via Bluetooth, which I'll talk about now. The second being with my turntable, which I'll talk about a little bit later because there was a definite different, different comparison between the two. Now to make this comparison, I connected both amplifiers to my one Little Bear audio switch, which is connected to my Klipsch Heresy speakers. I streamed music via Bluetooth through my iPad using the Tidal Music app. Now for this comparison, I listened to three songs. The first was Radiohead's Natural Anthem, followed by Beck's Nicotine and Gravy. Lastly, No Excuses by Alice in Chains. Now with each song, I noticed while listening with the original BT-20A that everything was a little bit more forward. To be honest with you, after listening to music through the BTA for a while, it got to be a little fatiguing. When I switched over and listened to all of these songs and other music with the Pro version, everything felt a little bit more laid back and all of the music sort of found its home within the mix. It made it much easier to listen to than the original version. Now what I realized when listening to both of these amps via Bluetooth, especially with a great sounding song like No Excuses by Alice in Chains, I realized that Bluetooth has really become my least favorite source of music to listen to. It's sort of like going to a craft brewery and looking at all the great beers on tap and ordering a bush light instead. It's gonna taste like beer, but there's a much better tasting option out there for you. And that's how I compare Bluetooth with wireless streaming. Now, I just spent the last couple of weeks comparing the Arilic S10 with the Weem Mini uh, wireless streamers. And listening to music through those wireless streamers, even with an amp like this, sounded so much better than just going straight to Bluetooth. So if you're buying one of these amplifiers for Bluetooth only, and you really wanna take your music listening experience to a whole other level, you should consider picking up either the Wii Mini Pro or the Arilic S10. It's gonna make things sound a lot better. Uh, but enough about Bluetooth. I was actually really surprised when I connected my turntable to both these amplifiers, what I was able to hear in comparing them with that source instead. I'll tell you a little bit more about that after I share a few more differences between these two models. Now, one of the most interesting features on the new Pro version is that Fozzy Audio has given us ability to easily change out the socketed NE5532 amp op amp chip to give you the ability to change the sound signature. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I have done this with these Class D amps, and I've heard and read a lot about people doing so. I've personally never done it, but I'm actually curious for those of you who do change the op amps on these Class D amplifiers, which ones do you like? Is there one that I should actually buy and try to swap out with one of these to get a different sound signature? I'd love for you to give me some ideas of what chips would be interesting to put in these in the comments below. 
Now this new feature is actually pretty cool. The rear of the Pro version now has a 3.5 millimeter pre-out, while the original version did not have that feature. This is going to allow you to use the new Pro version as a standalone preamp if you'd like to. Now this new feature is one that I personally really like, and that's because the Bluetooth connectivity on some of these Class D amplifiers can be kind of annoying. Here's looking at you, IEMA A08. Now what I mean by that is once you're connected to the Bluetooth, whether it be with your phone, computer, iPad, etc., oftentimes these Class D amplifiers require you to go into the settings on those, um, on those sources and actually physically disconnect in order to be able to use the RCA input. But what Fozzy Audio did with the new Pro version is on the volume knob here, you can simply press and hold this knob in. It's a nice little click when you're doing so and it will automatically clear the Bluetooth connection, which allows you to easily use whatever RCA input source that you may have connected. This has saved me a lot of time when using the Pro version, which was something that was not available on the original model. So after being kind of underwhelmed by the Bluetooth performance on both of these amplifiers, I really wanted to connect a direct source to each and be able to give it another proper sound comparison. That's why I decided to connect my vintage Pioneer PL560 turntable to each of these units and listen to what vinyl playback would sound on these. Now, neither of these have a built-in phono preamp, so I had to use my Vincent PHO-8 preamp in order to make that connection. Now, first things first, the turntable performance sounded so much better on both of these amplifiers. It really made me smile hearing music um, using the turntable versus Bluetooth. In fact, when I was using Bluetooth, I felt like I really had, I wanted to get the best sound comparison possible, so I kept the tone controls um, at zero on both of these units with Bluetooth, but like I just couldn't stand listening to it at that level. The sound was so anemic. So I did properly, or you know, I did try to match the tone controls via when listening via Bluetooth and adjust some bass and treble just to give the music some life. But when I used the turntable, I was actually able to adjust those back to zero and still got really great music performance. Now I listened to a lot of records when I was comparing these amplifiers, but I'll just focus on two today. The first being by Chris Forsyth and the Solar Motel Band. The album is called The Rarity Experience One. If you are a fan of guitar rock, think uh, television meets classic Neil Young. Um, this is a record that you should definitely check out. Just a lot of great guitar playing throughout the album. And what I noticed was the BT-20A actually sounded really good playing it, the original model. But once I started playing music on with the Pro version, I really started to hear new things in the music, especially around the guitars. I was able to hear a lot more uh, kind of a reverb in sort of like different effects that they were using with their pedals while playing guitars. A lot of that sound was more muted with the original version, so it was kind of exciting to hear those amplified better with the Pro. Next, I put on the Acoustic Sounds reissue of Charles Mingus, The Black Saint and the Sinner Lady. Now track two on this album is called Duet Solo Dancers, and there is a lot of interesting horn interplay in this album. The saxes and trombones and trumpets are all kind of going at it, and they almost sound like they're trying to talk to each other, especially the trumpet. Near the end of the song, the trumpet player almost makes it sound like they are actually trying to talk through the horn. It's very raspy, and it's almost like you can hear certain words. When I listened with the BT-20A, the original model, those sounds were kind of muted, kind of hidden in the background. But when I listened back with the Pro, those sounds, again, just like with the previous album where it, they were amplified more, those sounds really came out. And I was able to hear so much more interesting texture in the horn play when I was listening with the Pro version. To summarize it best, when listening with my turntable, there was not a massive night and day sound difference between this. Meaning if you own the original BT-20A, you shouldn't throw it in the trash can because the Pro sounds that much better. What I was able to hear with the Pro, again, goes back to what I was saying earlier. 
just more interesting parts that I wasn't able to hear with the original version were amplified and provided in more detail overall. Just made things a little bit more interesting to listen to. Again, the pro version seems a little less fatiguing. Like, I just enjoyed listening to it over longer periods of time. Whenever I would try to go back to listening to the original version for an extended period of time, I felt myself thinking, eh, I've probably heard enough and want to switch back to the pro version. Now there is one thing that I wish had been included with the pro version, and that's a remote control. Neither of these still have a remote control. And by me wanting one, does that make me sound lazy? Yeah. So should you buy the BT20A Pro? Let's talk to those first who may already own the original version and are considering an upgrade. I would give you three main reasons to upgrade to the Pro version. The first is you get more power with the Pro version. You also get the ability to change out the op amps if that's something that you are interested in doing. And lastly, you get that pre-out connection on the rear, which allows you to use the Pro version as a standalone preamp, which means you could connect it to other various Class D amps that may be in your collection at home. Now for anyone that may be shopping for an amplifier and trying to decide between the original BT20A and the Pro version, I again would point to those three features that I mentioned for anyone that might be interested in upgrading as a reason why you should strongly consider the Pro version. I also really like that the Pro version has this volume knob um, push button that can allow you to disconnect from Bluetooth. I really think that's an underlooked feature that you'll enjoy having over the original model. Now, two things before I let you go. First, I want to let you know full disclosure that Fazia Audio sent me the new Pro version for review, but they did not compensate me for this video. In fact, I bought the original version last year when I made the first video on the BT20A. Second, Fozzy Audio is actually offering a 20% off code that you can use if you buy this through their website. That code is good through April 30th. I will put that code in the description below. So if it's before April 30th and you're watching this video and you're interested in buying a pro version, you can do that using that code. Now, as I mentioned earlier, both of these units use Bluetooth for music streaming playback, and that sounds fine. But if you really wanna take music streaming to the next level, you should consider buying a wireless streamer. Now, there are two main popular wireless streamers on the market right now, the Arillic S10 and the Weem Mini. I made a video recently comparing both of those in an effort to help people try to decide which one is right for them. If you're interested in watching that video, you can do so by clicking here.